Hello, welcome to the Finnish pavilion. So, here we can go inside. The pavilion, as you can see, is shaped in the shape of an Arabic tent covered by snow. And it is by some Finnish architect group called JKMM. And to many, the very simple and like Finnish um, design is very intriguing since many other pavilions, they have a lot of lights and they are very flashy. Is this a little bit like the Helsinki Harbor or no? Um, this is at least, these are actually called lakes and that is because Finland is also called the land of a thousand lakes. Well actually we have 188,000 lakes and these are the two newest additions to our lakes. Uh, did you say correctly 188,000 lakes? That's yes. That's a lot of lakes. That is a lot of lakes. And they all have names? Yes, every single one has an individual name. So Some are like very long and strange, no Yes, names. so the okay. biggest lake in Finland is called the Saima Lake. And that is um, really huge. It is larger than all the cities in Finland combined, I think. So we are very proud of our lakes. And this is the entrance to the pavilion. And right as we get inside, you can see our slogan. In the mirror, you can see the English version. And actually, the Arabic version is from the lights directly. So this artwork is meant to confuse the people that can speak both English and Arabic. So, Welcome to Future Happiness stands for as Finland has been voted the happiest country in the world for four years in a row now and we want to welcome everyone to you, the You happiness. stole it from Denmark? Yes, yeah. about four years in a row, so Denmark What do you do to improve. become happier than Denmark? <sighs> Something happened, right? Yeah, so actually, well, the base of happiness in Finland becomes from uh, the education system and also the healthcare system. So we have free education, free healthcare, really high quality to everyone that lives in Finland. So and it doesn't get too hot, even though the summer is amazing in no, Finland. No, the summer right? is about 25 degrees Celsius, yeah. and it is the perfect summer in my opinion. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect destination. Come there in June, July, August, uh, but every any time of the year, right? Of but course, uh, yeah. those those months, you get a nice Finnish air connection or yeah, Norwegian or something. Yeah. So. Uh, the summer is obviously the most intriguing time to many since it is very nice to have a 25 degree summer and the nature is open to everyone and the Finnish nature is also very safe so that's why summer is usually it but then again also you have a mask in Finland? yes so these are actually this is a Finnish mask company called Jedex and they aim to make masks that are easy to breathe in and also safer than normal masks yeah, because uh, everybody else is just w wearing a Kleenex on their faces, right? Yeah. No, exactly. I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> All no, right. It is that. Um, and here we have some Finnish electricity companies and nuclear power industry displays. So all the displays in the pavilion are also touchscreen. And, and they're, um, of course, they are from a f Finnish company, those touchscreens, exactly. right? Very famous one. It okay, does all the big touch the screens. screens are not uh, by a Finnish company. They're just normal right. touch screens. And okay. I don't think we have any electricity company that makes touch screens in Finland. But the videos and every material and every company is finished in the pavilion. All right. I did a video with an amazing uh, big touch screen uh, Helsinki company. Uh, but maybe it's not this one. Yes. Maybe it is. I don't think so because we haven't told. Yeah. We haven't been told about this. I'm and pretty sure they have at least a dozen contracts with big other pavilions. Probably. Because yeah. some of the big, big touch screens. Mm -hmm. And so these are all part of the same thing about nuclear power and nuclear waste final repository. So um, this is a system that we can bury the nuclear waste 400 meters below the ground, below the bedrock, so that it is not harmful to anything above ground or close to the ground level. So and you have a, a few nuclear power plants? Yes. And we have more in like process of coming. Of course, there's a lot of politics with nuclear power. It is very tough to get nuclear power plants actually like set up and working. It takes uh, dozens of years sometimes or decades. Yes. Uh, and then you need to get the uranium to come from somewhere. Of course, yeah. Because and, that doesn't like And, and also uh, there could be a lot of wind. So you have a lot of wind power, right? Yes, we have. Um, actually, I think solar power is bigger in Finland since we don't have really like the ideal spots for wind power plants in Finland since we have uh, we don't have like very uh, s like what do you call it 
vast uh, yeah, like vast planes. With a yeah, we don't have many planes. Not so deep water exactly. and stuff like that. We have a lot of forests and lakes and everything. So. Oh, yeah. And this is a Finnish lock company called iLock. They make smart locks and especially electric locks. So uh, they have locks that works with keys, but the keys actually have an electric signature. So you can reprogram the keys and also they can work with your phone as well as your key. And then we have some Finnish air company called Halton. They make especially like air cleaning or air conditioning for very high, um, like, for hospitals and stuff, so that needs very high quality. Air purification is very yes. important, especially with all these weird things people are throwing in the air in the cities. Exactly. You want to clean the air because uh, some people have problems breathing. Exactly, and especially for hospitals, which is probably the main market of Halton, when you need super clean air because the potions, po patients can be very sensitive to very bad quality air. So. And it's a, maybe a very popular thing to export around the world, like China and India, and everybody wants Definitely. to have clean yes. air. And since Finland is known for the clean air, by the reason of forest and everything, so... Can you, can you make like a, a giant machine that just cleans the whole air on the planet? <sighs> Unfortunately, okay. no. Okay, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Maybe in the future, though. Who knows? Right. And then we have companies... This is Granlund. So they are uh, like management software for ap apartment buildings and such and they have just their game here that you can play if you have more time but we can skip that for now and they have these QR codes around the pavilion that you can scan if anything's wrong with the pavilion you can scan the QR code send a message to our management team and then we'll fix it I think you'll get a bunch of messages after this video okay Definitely. Well, nothing's wrong yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes and then I guess we can go to our main national partner, Kone. So many people pronounce it wrong, Kone, Kone, whatever you could pronounce, but it's pronounced Kone. And it's actually a Finnish word that means machine. And it is a very known company all over the world, and they make elevators and escalators. And actually here in the expo, they make about 80% of the elevators and escalators. Also, you can see them very clearly at the metro entrance to the expo. So uh, I was at the Swiss Pavilion where they mm -hmm. said Schindler is uh, the elevator in the Burj Khalifa, but maybe it is Kone? Or? Uh, Burj Khalifa is Schindler, yes. But for ah, okay. example, in the Princess Towers, for example, there's Kone elevators. And quite a lot of actually skyscrapers in Dubai also have Kone. Because you, you want to have a very fast elevator, very safe, very smooth. Yes. It's such a crazy important technology that we have and, yes. and we take for granted. Exactly. And also, since Kone doesn't want to be just about getting people around to places. So they actually, what they, we have here is the Kone DX class elevator, which stands for digital experience. So I can actually show you, this is just from the outside, so I can show you the inside later, but you can press these buttons to have a picture shown on the Kone elevator. We can wait for the elevator to come back down. Ah, yeah, it's up there. Yes. And we can show you the insides of the elevator later. They are completely customizable all the way from sound to video inside the elevator. And of course, very high quality elevators are very important. It'd be so, nice if you had an apartment building and every time you got an elevator, there was a personalized experience for every person. They that get their messages on the screen and everything. Exactly. They, don't, they don't even want to get out of the elevator. Right? Exactly. That's not very good maybe, but yes. Yeah. So these are the theme of this is what makes you happy. So you can choose your favorite emotion, like nature right here, or love, whatever you might feel like at the moment. And then you can see a picture re reflected on the elevator. All right. Yes. And then we can go forward. Let's go this way. So um, the architecture and the design uh, by a Finnish architect or? Yes, uh, actually by an architect group. So the architecture architect group is called JKMM Architects. So there's a lot of different architects that have designed this pavilion, but they work for the same architect group. But all these displays are by their own companies also. So right here we have the missing link circular economy artwork. So this is just an artwork, but it actually represents a very important topic. So all of these small lines around the artwork actually represent real statistics that you can see on that side. 
and they are actually taken from the Finnish society and they are themes of how to improve your personal life and how to lessen your carbon footprint. And they are, some of them are very specific to Finland, but some of them are that could be directly taken to use even in other countries. Uh, does it say here that mm -hmm. you have to put vitamin D in all milk? <laughs> no, it doesn't. No? It is there. something that Finland does, right? Yes, that is because of our very long and very dark winters. So actually, we have this thing called uh, land of never rising sun. So the sun can not rise at all in the winter. So we can have a day where we don't see the sun at all. I so. went uh, in 2003 to the Midnight Sun Film Festival in Sodankula. Yes, that is the opposite of that. So in yeah, that was like I didn't know what time it was. It was six in the morning, and exactly. it was like looked and it's like an uh, afternoon. Exactly. And even like when you try to go to sleep and the sun's still up, it feels so weird. When you wake up, the sun's up again. So it's definitely a very interesting concept. And right here we have probably the biggest and most interesting machine in the pavilion by two Finnish companies actually called Bertila and Solitaire Power. And the coffee machine right here, big, shiny, uh, everyone in, is interested in it. But actually what we're presenting here is this machine behind it. And that is a very innovative machine using technology called Power to X and that actually means that it can take the carbon dioxide in the air and turn that into a usable fuel called methane. So we can make carbon neutral renewable fuels from just the air. Uh, and this sounds like it sounds like one of these things you would say that's like, completely impossible and some people say, ah, oh, I know how to make uh, unlimited power or something. It sounds like that. Yeah, but it actually is possible. We have it here working at, right at this moment as well. And there are some, of course, there is a lot of complicated chemistry involved. And also it does need solar power to get hydrogen from. So we actually need hydrogen from somewhere. But if you have hydrogen, which we can get from water and then just air, then we can make carbon or uh, methane could, uh, from the carbon dioxide. You could ship a bunch of hydrogen from the Danish uh, wind, wind farms in the Definitely. sea yes. and just get a little boat that goes up or a pipeline or I don't know. Exactly. And then uh, you would take carbon and mix it with the hydrogen and boom. To get methane. Yes, exactly. And then you get uh, as much power you need. Yes. But uh, uh, how, uh, how's the efficiency? How is, uh, like, uh, are you going to uh, spend, you know, like X amount of energy to get less out or not really? Well, it depends on how you count it. If you count the whole process of getting the electricity from the sun or the wind power to get the hydrogen, then yes, it is about 30% efficient. But if you already have the hydrogen, then it is 100% efficient to turn the carbon dioxide from the air into methane. Can I look inside or see it? You can look inside here. Yeah. So this is fine. And that is actually the carbon filter, so it uses carbon capture technology to let all the air pass through and just stick to the carbon dioxide. So this machine is actually an air purifier at the same time. Nice. Uh, so in, in the future every air purifier could be actually powering the washing machine or something? <laughs> of course, yes. Since that is actually, the air purifiers kind of just take the carbon dioxide and put it elsewhere. This is one way to use the carbon dioxide. That's uh, awesome. Is it, is it just like something, this is just something you show at the expo just like that? Or is it a big, big project, very important it is project? It a very big project, yes. Actually, this is the first working prototype that we have right here. But it is aimed to become commercialized and to be a very common thing in the future. And also, it is very big, it is very clumsy at the moment. But uh, the companies Vertsila and Solitaire Power are aiming to make it a lot smaller, more compact so that it can fit everywhere in restaurants or even in living rooms or something. And uh, over here, is it where you're growing the, the Finnish uh, hash? <laughs> Unfortunately not. No? We grow a lot simpler plants like strawberries here, also lettuce and spices. And this is a, a farm called Evergreen Farm. It is a vertical hydroponic farm. And that can sound quite complicated, but what that actually means is that the plants grow vertically on top of each other which is where the vertical part comes from. And it's a hydroponic farm, which means that it doesn't use common soil. So it is actually a substrate from cocoa peat and biochar. And what all that allows us to do is obviously save a lot of space, as well as save water and nutrients to grow the plants. It can also grow the plants faster than out in nature. So for example, 
the strawberries can grow in Finland so that you can harvest them once a year. Of course, that does take into account the long winter, but with this technology, we can grow them so that we can harvest them about five times a year. So that would be five times more efficient that way. And um, how soon are we from, uh, from this being in a massive deployment? Or is this also the first prototype? Or? No, this is actually already in the commercial markets. You can actually buy this even for your own house if you would like it to. And the CEO of the company has told us that if someone is interested, they can do the model that would fit their needs. So there's different kinds of models for growing different kinds of plants. This one's aimed for 20 to 30 centimeter tall plants, but there's obviously different layouts for small trees and other and, plants. Uh, these seeds were just uh, planted uh, at the beginning of the expo? Exactly. So yes. it's just uh, a month and something, right? Yes. I completely automated. We don't do anything to the plants. The system takes care of it. There's a few thousand sensors and there are sensors for every single plant individually that we can let the machine take care of every plant. And where do we go next? Let's go this way. Yeah. So here we have a place called Golla Cave and this is just right now showing Finnish nature. So this is a place for relaxation. You can sit here, enjoy the pictures of Finnish nature and we can actually turn this space into a 3D environment so we can make the screen show 3D pictures of the Finnish nature so that you can immerse yourself in the Finnish nature even more. And you can also make it show, for example, a design blueprint of a hospital in 3D. And that is actually what this technology is meant to be used for, to design spaces and buildings in 3D so that you can feel like you are actually in the space while designing it. So, um, I, I see a very big projector up there mm -hmm. uh, going into a mirror and then going in this direction, uh, I see finished design. Uh, is, so you, you're saying that this is not just a basic cinema or something? No. The curved uh, screen background? Yes. There's more to it? No. It, uh, it is, um, the curve is actually very important for this, since the 3D immersion works better with the curve. And the projector, as, it, as you see, is very huge and it is for a very special kind of 3D experience. So obviously with the camera you can't see it, and right now we don't have it on, we have it on 2D. But if we need to, for example, showcase to someone, if someone's interested in buying this technology, we can show it in 3D and show how immersive it actually is. All right. Thank you. Cool. We can go forward again. Yeah. <laughs> and next we can go to the right side of the pavilion, or the left side, depending on where you're looking from. And here we have a company called Black Donuts. And of course, many people just see the tires and they think that it's a tire company. But actually, they don't make tires at all. They actually just make the machines to make the tires. And what's special about their machines is how they can use renewable materials that are also safer, since actually the emissions from a car are not as dangerous as the emissions from the tires, actually since the small particles of rubber and other substances that fly off the tires are way more, about 10 times more uh, harmful to humans compared to the fumes from an exhaust pipe. Thank you. And then next is a Finnish valve company called Nelles. So they make smart water valves. And to a normal person that might sound very boring and they are not aiming to sell these for every household either but they're actually aiming for the business to business business to government markets and what's special about their valves is their very high quality as well as their smart functions that you can control and monitor them from wherever you want and however you, precisely you would need to and then next Valmet they're also making machines and not actual products so what they're making is machines for the pulp and paper industry. So they specialize in very high quality machines that, and also training supplies using, for example, virtual reality and augmented reality to train people and to make the machines and also to operate the machines as well. And next, we have a company or actually a Finnish university here. 
So many people might know that the Finnish education is one of the best educations in the world. And this is one of the Finnish universities of applied sciences. So it is called Haagahelia. And actually all the guides here in the pavilion are from this university. So we are all students doing our uh, internship here in the Dubai World Expo. And this is the university we are from. So what this display is actually showing is an AI that aims to predict the world's career options. So with this AI, you can see what you should study right now for it to be very useful in the future. So uh, what do you study? I study tourism at the moment. So tourism and event management is actually the whole. Uh, there's the, it's, it, it's extremely important for uh, people from different places to mix and, and go around the world and get inspiration from each other. Tourism is not just for, I mean, it's important to relax yes. with the lakes and everything, but you also want to get inspiration by, for example, when you visit Finland, you want to get inspiration. Why are they so happy and try to bring it to your country? Right? Of course, and that's why I'm here to learn about the Middle Eastern culture and to bring the best parts into Finland as well, to see what we can use in the Finnish tourism industry. Yeah. And since education in Finland is not just about the universities, there's also uh, interactive experience here about Finnish education as a whole. It takes a few minutes, so you can go over it on your own whenever you want to. But there is videos and interactive experiences here that you can see. Uh, wh why would you say the, the Finnish um, universities are so good? I would say that because we have a lot of critical thinking taught to us all the way since the beginning of the school lives. So we are taught to not take everything for granted and to research ourselves. So we are very capable in researching every topic that we might come across. Learn everything about everything that you involve with, <laughs> not just like the stuff that you need to know, right? Exactly, yes. All right. So. And here we have the Finnish baby aid kit. And this is actually a concept in Finland that when a mother uh, gets pregnant and when the child is being birthed, this gets sent to every mother for absolutely free. So you get all of this that you have here, and it actually comes in a big cardboard box that can be turned into a bed for the baby as well. So everything you might ever need for the baby and also for the mother to grow the baby is granted for free every time. So does that mean everybody in Finland has exactly these? Yes, every the baby. The same design? Well, I think there is probably choice regarding the design, and I know that there are different kinds of models for every year. So probably not the exact same, but pretty much the same, yes. It, it is Im important to uh, to get new children Especially, <laughs> in yes. uh, every country. Some, some countries have uh, problems with the population uh, declining, de yes, declining. Definitely. And this is also, we can send this to developing countries as well to aid with, since obviously, as you read from the text right here, there's so many child deaths and we aim to reduce that. So. We, by sending this to developing countries, we aim to make better lives for everyone around the world. So uh, Finland is definitely Finland is definitely helping the other countries. Of course, not yes. just taking care of themselves. Not just right? ourselves. Yes, and that's what our expo is all about: is spreading happiness to other countries as well. And then we had Finnish healthcare overall here as well. And then next we have Lakwa, which is premium water from Finland. The name Lahkwa actually comes from obviously Aqua and then Lahti, which is a city in Finland where the water actually comes from. And it is pure spring water and as Finland has every tap water in Finland is drinkable and we have very clean waters as well. So this is aimed, uh, aimed to bring the Finnish water experience to everywhere in the world as well. And then the famous book of Santa Claus with all the wishes of the children around the world. And you can't look inside, it is secret for the privacy concerns. But of course, many people might not know, I hope everyone knows, but many people might not, that Santa Claus is from Finland, from Rovaniemi specifically. And this, is book, this book is borrowed from Santa Claus here, and he will actually be coming to the pavilion in December to get the book back and to get some more wishes from the children here as well. And Finland is very big into tourism, as I should know as well. So many 
places in Finland, not just the northern Finland where Santa Claus is from, but also the southern and the middle parts of Finland aim to make better industries for tourism. And that's what this screen is all about, different areas of Finland being promoted. And then next we have Finnair. Everyone knows the airline company from Finland, Finnair. Premium airlines taking people from everywhere to Finland and from Finland to everywhere. Actually, uh, when I was flying from Copenhagen to China, mm -hmm. I often saw that Finnair was like way faster connection somehow than going down sometimes. Yes, it's a pretty actually, shortcut. Yes, I don't even know why, but Finnair just seems to be faster no matter where you're going. So, I guess it just goes north around the planet instead of going... Yeah, I guess that actually makes sense, yeah, because you can yeah. get through the shorter side of the planet. And here we have two Finnish companies, Fiskars and Ittala. Ittala makes premium glass, completely handmade, every piece of their glass, and then Fiskars scissors. So actually in this artwork you can see the scissors and the glass combined. And actually every one of these is individually handmade and therefore very special. No one is the same from the other. And you can actually buy one of these individually. You can choose which one you would like to buy if you're interested in getting a very special souvenir from the Finnish pavilion. This guy. Oh yeah, this guy's Moomin, or from the Moomins. Um, many children might know the show Moomins. It is very, very big in Finland, and it is from Finland, so that is of course the reason. And it is also very big here in the UAE as well. Uh, it's big in many countries. That's really good to hear. We, we have heard. actually run into people that have no idea what it is, so I'm starting to lose my faith in humanity as a whole, but no, just kidding. Alright, so the shop, yeah. this is the shop. buy a bunch of stuff. Everything is bring. from Finland or related to Finland in one way or another. There's some special premium jewelry and also the Itala glass that we saw earlier as well. Is it photography? Mm -hmm. This is a hat? No, actually it is a pillow. pillow? Everything, everyone thinks it's a hat, but I guess I can see where it comes from. That. Okay, it's actually so, a okay. pillow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And this is uh, this is reindeer hides. So actually, uh, many people might think that reindeer hides are not sustainable, and as everything in the pavilion is very sustainable, but that is actually wrong because reindeers are uh, they are there's a very lot of reindeers in Finland, so we need to hunt them sustainably every once in a while, and the reindeer hides are actually the parts that would normally not be used about reindeers. So this is the way to use even the waste parts of a, an animal. What happens if you have too many reindeers? They just eat everything. Reindeers like to eat all the plants, no matter what. So we have to keep the population stable so that they don't eat too much and overpopulate. And also other animals as well that might be cause the same similar problem. And then the last part of the exhibition is the center of the pavilion, the gorge. So you can enter it from this tent-shaped entrance and actually inside of here you can smell the walls which are made of Finnish pine wood and also the atmosphere in here is very special as especially during the hot days it gets nice and cool here about 25 degrees just like the Finnish summer and the atmosphere in here with the music and everything is very special we actually call it an artwork spreading the serenity of Finland it's a little bit like a giant sauna, no? No, I'm joking, it's not hot. Yeah, yeah, it is not hot, but I can definitely see where you're coming from with the wooden walls and everything. So, pine wood is one of the woods that can be used for a Finnish sauna. And actually, there's also a church in Finland that resembles this architecture a lot. Wow. I, I, I get the urge to lean a little bit when I'm oh, here. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I feel a little bit like I'm going in a... By just walking and looking up, I get, um, yeah, it's really challenging the senses. Yeah, you get a little bit dizzy. It's and amazing. Yeah, but actually, since the music and everything is so calming inside of here, it is very nice to just come in here, sit down, enjoy, relax a bit, because the expo can be very hectic. So you can just come in here, sit down, relax and spend some quality time just by yourself or with your family, friends, whatever. This is where, this is where you have all the VIP business meetings. Exactly. Right, just no. sit down here. We actually have and a separate VIP floor on the second floor of the pavilion for the VIP meetings and everything. 
But wow. this is a very nice space. Uh, so this just this needs to stay after the expo. Definitely. Is it going to stay? Yes, I definitely hope it's going to stay. I don't know about the executive decisions yet, but I'm definitely hoping that the pavilion stays and this space will stay the same. Nice. And uh, during the day when it's um, hot out there, does it get cooled in here somehow? Yes, actually. The temperature is about the same, 25 degrees, no matter the time of the day or time of the year for that matter. So there's a special cooling system that only cools down the lower 10 meters from the ground since we don't need to care about the air up there. And actually the sounds here in the gorge are also taken from the Finnish nature. So in that way as well we are bringing the Finnish nature here in the middle of the desert, so to say. That's a cool, that was a grand finale. Yes, thank right. you so much. All right, thanks so much. I hope it was so, very interesting. And you have a whole bunch of social media and stuff for the expo? Yes, definitely. We have uh, the Finnish uh, Instagram page, hashtag Finland Pavilion. And, uh, where, where, you post, where you post all your official stuff there. Yes, I think it's actually Finland Expo 2020 Pavilion, if I remember correctly. And, it's a very uh, long name. Did the pres president come? Oh, do you have a prime no. minister, sorry? Yes, actually the president didn't come here physically, but he was here by a hologram uh, for our national day. And for Independence Day in uh, December, he will unfortunately have his own party in Finland, so... Actually, you have president, you don't have the prime minister thing. Um, no, we had the president virtually, and I don't think the prime minister uh, yeah. has yeah. been here yet. I th I'm assuming that she will come, but we don't know about that for sure. All right. It's important with all the, the VIPs to mingle uh, and get some, some things done for the future. The expo is all about being positive, right? Exactly. Yeah. Coming, with, uh, coming together and doing something positive for the world. Definitely. All right.